Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro, Tra Pro Trader webinar series for December 15th. Uh, this is part two of Enrico Stuckey's uh, presentation. Uh, that was, um, uh, part one was on Friday. Uh, I'll show you uh, the recording for that if you're interested. Uh, if you have not seen that, it was excellent, and it really sets it up very nicely for today's presentation, uh, where you're gonna get the practical uses of what he presented on uh, on Friday, uh, the presentation was just just excellent. Um, let me uh, show you here uh, uh, what Enrico uh, sort of went through here, just to recap uh, very briefly here. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel and you scroll down here, uh, the Pro Trader webinar series right here, you can click on the text here and you can get all of the uh, uh, Pro Trader web webinars over um, several months here. Uh, Enrico is right here at the top. Click on that. And this is this is part part one right here, okay? Part one of two, uh, and uh, yeah, he just goes through the commitment of traders and uh, understanding the, the uh, larger players in the market, uh, and the, you know the smart money institutional players, etc. Uh, and now he's going to get into more practical uses here. Uh, the um, let me go through some of the risk disclaimers here, okay? Uh, general disclosure: uh, all bookmap limited materials information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation uh, demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that cannot that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, you can also read the hypothetical uh, disclosure performance here if you like. It's more for automated trading. Uh, and um, uh, a bit about Enrico, started uh, uh, his career uh, as a part-time trader back in 2002 uh, while working for a large telco company. In 2009, he decided to leave his job and become a professional trader. Uh, he uses a quantitative approach to determine specific edges in the market. He's currently managing a pro prop trading firm uh, with diversified strategic approaches, automated trading systems, and quantitative investing. Enrico combines his quantitative methods together with order flow and liquidity analysis from Bookmap to support his trading decisions. He is classified as a large trader by the CFTC. And if you watch the uh, uh, presentation on, um, on Friday, you would understand what that means. Uh, he is a big fish. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I, have, I have Enrico's um, uh, uh, contact information here. If you wanna reach out to him, Specifically, you have his email, Facebook, and special offers from Bookmap here uh, from Enrico. I will paste these into the chat so you have the link and you can just click on it from there. Uh, other than that, uh, really uh, uh, looking forward to this, Enrico, and let me give you the presentation. Okay. Okay. Good yep. morning, everybody. Looks can, good. can you? Okay, do you see the presentation mode? Yes. PowerPoint? Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, let me start uh, with my um, apologize for my macaroni English. So please be patient, forgive me for that. And uh, I wanna just, um, before starting, um, I add all links of the previous presentation here in the comments. Uh, below the YouTube video in the Pro Trader, Pro Trader webinar series in Bookmap website, if you want, okay? Excellent, excellent. Uh, Thank maybe, you very much for doing that. Enrico. Maybe you have to accept. I don't know if you have um, a moderation for for that for those comments or not. Well, I don't know if they are available available now or not. But anyway, um, I put here. Okay. Um, we, uh, today uh, we are facing something more practical and uh, I want to show you, I, I use the information on Apple and Microsoft, Microsoft charts to trade 
on NQ futures. But before starting, I would like to answer a question asked in the chat room last Friday, where someone, I think, uh, was called Thomas, asked how to use the information of the court report for trading. Uh, actually, I didn't speak about code report in order to show how to use it for trading. I just wanted to point out that retailer traders were irre irrelevant in the market and uh, were the needs of the big money that dominates the market. However, it's possible to use cut figures for building, uh, for building different trading strategy. Uh, let me show what I'm doing with cut report, very simple. Uh, first, I run a back test for every single future that I'm trade, there are a lot of, of future, and for seeing uh, which category of trader is the best to follow. Uh, I'm using a KISS principle, KISS stands for keep it simple, stupid, I know that I'm stupid, so I want to do very simple things. So I try to evaluate simultaneously uh, the price and the position of large speculators, small speculators, or commercials, small speculator and commercial. So I try to understand which is better to follow. Um, I do the I do this job, this task, using a backtest because backtests are better than my eyes. So eyes can be uh, sometimes tricky, uh, but the, the the strategy is very simple. For instance, here you can see that large speculators are increasing their net position and the price rise. Um, here the same, the price is rising and the large speculators are increasing their position. Here the price is falling down and the net position are decreasing. So that's a very really simple stupid strategy. So I backtest every single future for understanding which is the best um, tra trader category to follow. Um, so uh, sometime I'm also watching the small speculators because small speculators are considered dumb money, so I can maybe follow those positions or I can use it as a contrarian, contrarian retail strategy. So I'm doing exactly the opposite that they are doing. Um, however, uh, small speculators, as we have seen last Friday, are just a subset of small speculators. So this is not a truly contrarian retail strategy. But anyway, sometimes it works. So after I did every back test, there are two possible ways to use those cut, this cut information. The first one is I can use as a trend filter. So for instance, if the smartest guy are speculators, for example, if, if they are increasing net lock positions, I only try long trades using my classic trading setup. So for instance, simple breakout of daily or weekly high and lows. Uh, may I, I can also use those information as simple signal. Uh, so if the speculators, for instance, are the smartest guy and the, their net position are increasing, I go long. That's very simple. If they are decreasing, I go short. I can just add some simple stop losses and take profit exit, and that's all. Does it work? Yes, that's simple but effective, okay? This is the uh, result with three years out of sample of the what I'm calling follow the smartest money portfolio. This is an equal weight portfolio with a lot of future inside Okay, if I am looking at this individual equity lines, they are not so beautiful to see. But if you look at the portfolio equity line, you can see that it's quite smooth. 
because uh, diversification is the key for having a uh, diversification of strategies is the, is the key for having a quite smooth trade uh, equity line. So it's a very relaxing way of trading because you have no more than one trading signal, signal per week per instrument. But uh, obviously you have to be capitalized enough because there are a lot of future together so margins can be uh, large okay if you are a day trader uh, if you don't want to keep positions overnight for days and weeks this kind of trading strategies is maybe not suitable for you okay that's the answer to the thomas question let's go on uh, today we are speaking about my strategies of, of trading Nasdaq future looking at Apple and Microsoft charts. I, I will explain the reason why, basic strategies using bookmap as some tips and tricks. Reason why, this is the first one. Look at the uh, Nasdaq 100 components and their weights. Apple weights for 12% of Nasdaq and Microsoft 10%, Amazon 10%. So the first two shares or three shares accounts for 32 to 22% of the Nasdaq 100 index. Okay. This is, for instance, SP500 um, market cap. You can see that the main uh, sixth. Um, six uh, shares accounts for about 50% of the market cap of S&P 500. Okay, Tesla is not in the S&P now. It, it start to be in S&P uh, next Friday. Next Friday will be a very volatile day because we have quadruple, uh, you say four witches and um, Tesla is coming in S&P 500. Um, Apple, as you can see, 58% um, of, um, of Apple shares are owned by institutional. Okay. Who is this guy? Rock, Berkshire, the biggest one. The same for Microsoft. Microsoft has got even 70% of the their shares owned by institutional O. And the same, um, the same owner. Uh, you can find those figures here in NASDAQ website, very easy. Very interesting because you can have also change in their position. This is beta, so the volatility related to the index. This is Apple. In the last years, Apple has been more volatile than Nasdaq. 1.30 is the, the beta. And uh, Microsoft just a le little bit less, 0.8. This is variable, OK? But uh, now you can see, for instance, the last five, mo five uh, um, months is 136, 135 for Apple and 0.87 for Microsoft. Okay, so uh, why I'm looking to Apple and Microsoft charts for trading Nasdaq? Simple, because Apple and Microsoft are strongly correlated to Nasdaq and vice versa. Because Apple and Microsoft have sharper liquidity levels than NQ. Apple and Microsoft have more predictable, let me say that, levels than NQ. So this is, for instance, long-term correlation, Apple versus NASDAQ, this is correlation coefficient. That means, uh, if you know, one is the um, best correlation, minus one is the anti-correlation, as zero is not correlation. So 0 0.73 is very high for Apple and 0 0.79 for Microsoft. This is long correlation, okay? So uh, long period. But 
This is the intraday correlation NASDAQ against Apple. Okay, dots is Apple and the yellow line is NASDAQ. Okay. Um, okay, the correlation is not perfect every day, every single day, but uh, let me show for instance here. Can you see uh, my book map now on the screen? Bruce, can you see my book map? I don't know. Well, um, this is for instance, the correlation between Microsoft and Apple today. It's quite good. While for instance, Apple today has rise very, very fast um, at, the, at the starting and uh, so while NASDAQ didn't. But anyway, it depends, it varies day by day. This for instance is uh, the correlation between Microsoft, NASDAQ and Apple. Okay, um, you, I put uh, for every day, uh, for every um, mm, screenshot dates, uh, I have used European um, notation, I mean day, month, year, instead of the US month, day, year. And I usually, um, I'm using local time. So my local time is Central European time. That means GMT plus one. Please remember this because uh, for instance, here are my local time. So you have to um, uh, subtract six hours from here to New York City. So East Coast and seven, uh, sorry, so seven hours, sorry, um, six hours and seven hours uh, if you are in Chicago, for instance. So the exchange time is this one minus seven, okay? So um, for instance, here in Italy, uh, the cash session start at 15.30 p.m. while in uh, Chicago, 8.30 and New York City, 9.30 a.m. Uh, 3 p.m., 3, 3, 3 p.m., um, okay. Um, now, uh, let me show, for instance, this is ES. This is ES during European session. Okay, you can see here that the liquidity levels during the European session are quite clear, they are sharp. But when the um, cash session starts at 8.30 uh, a.m. in Chicago, so uh, 3.30 p.m. here in Italy, the situation becomes more difficult for me to understand because the liquidity are increasing just um, on BDO. So the levels here are not so clear for me. Okay, this is the, the same, for instance, here the ES before the starting session here. The session starts here. So here is quite sharp and we call here become um, more uh, we can more um, tricky okay that's again yes during the european session quite clear and here is nasdaq for instance during cash session so during the rth regular time hours as you can see here, lever are quite similar. So I cannot see really, okay, here we have more liquidity and maybe here, but the difference are not so strong. Okay. That's it. That's NASDAQ during European morning session. It's quite clean. And then it became confusing for me. Okay. Same, this is NASA before and during a session. This is NASA before and during a session. Okay, now let's compare uh, Apple and NASA. Okay, this is Apple and this is NASA. As you can see, liquidity levels in Apple are really, really, really 
sharper than on NQ. That's why I prefer to look at Apple levels instead of NASDAQ. Okay, the same. This is in, in a cash session, Apple and NASDAQ. This is the correlation between Apple and NASDAQ. Say so NASDAQ is the yellow line and Apple dots. Okay, another important um, point to add. Okay, look at those level. You, as you can see, you can see so peaks and valley are are sharp and peaks are concentrated on round numbers. So 100, uh, 122, 20, 21, 20 and so on okay if you compare for instance here you can okay here in nasdaq you don't have so uh, a so clear distinction between peak and valley while on nasdaq it's quite sharp okay as i said um you have more predictable levels in nasdaq in uh, Apple than in uh, on NQ because you have round numbers and 50 cents number. So the unit and uh, the point 0.50, okay, so 20, 19.50, 19, 18.50 and so on. So as you can see levels are really, really, really concentrated on those numbers. So as I say, as I said that this, those levels are predictable is because you have those levels. That's quite clear on every chart. Why? Why liquidity is so concentrated around um, around round numbers? Because at round um, at round numbers you have strike price for options. So. Uh, for instance, if you are a, an option seller and the price go against your position, you have to hedge your position um, with the underline or just adjusting the position on, on options, but also buying or selling the underline. So this, the very important levels are protected with liquidity. So that's the reason for that. One of the reasons, I don't know if the, it's there is the only reason, but I think the most important one. Okay, uh, but if Apple levels are sharper, and why don't you trade directly on Apple stock instead of using Nasdaq? I do both, but sometimes I prefer to trade Nasdaq because, um, for instance, for commissions, one Nasdaq contract approximately um, as $250,000 market value, and they pay around $4 round turn commissions. So one, one buy, one sell, $4. Why, if, um, if I'm using Apple instead, uh, for instance, I want to market value, so 250 uh, KS, uh, it does mean approximately uh, 1,136 shares. So using IBKR, Interactive Broker, then I pay zero zero point five dollars per share. So it means $12 round tar. So NASDAQ is cheaper. Also consider a spread with ask. So the slippage, if I'm... Um, Use, if I'm using market orders. With NASDAQ, you have one or two ticks of spread. So it, uh, it means five, $10. While with Apple, you have just one tick. Well, one tick, one cent uh, multiplied by uh, 1,000 shares means about $11.36 per trade, per trade. Per, uh, per opening and close. So 
the difference is quite evident. And leveraging also. So for instance, with NASDAQ, uh, CME of official current margin is $80,000. The leveraging so is 250000 divided by um, 11,000, 18,000 means 14. So this is the leveraging with NQ, while with Apple, you have four leveraging clicks intraday and two overnight. So I can move more NQ money with the same amount of money in margin. Uh, if you consider beta, um, Apple is better than NQ because it's more volatile, it's about 1.35 times. But that's the reason that uh, for preferring um, NASDAQ instead of Apple when I'm trading. Uh, why not looking at QQQ? QQQ is the um, ETF on NASDAQ, the, the main one, uh, because it's not so clear. Okay. Here, for instance, bad beast, best bid and best offer uh, are very concentrated. So the liquidity is not so sharp here. If you compare with Apple, the difference is enormous. Okay, here we can, you can compare directly uh, Apple and QQQ. You can see the difference. Okay, uh, trading tips. First one, when you are trading, I suggest to prefer financial instruments that show a prevalent behavior. So every uh, instrument can have, uh, let me say, trend follower uh, behavior or have a prevalent reversal. So for instance, in trend follower, you, you can have some instrument that prefer breakout strategies, some other with momentum strategy and some other that accelerate. So they are uh, following a volatility breakout strategies. While some other instruments, for instance, prefer mean reverting strategy. So you prefer to trade a reversal pattern and some um, instruments have a long or short bias. For instance, uh, US index have a, a strong long bias, so they are rising. While for instance, natural gas has a, a very sh uh, a strong short bias. So uh, short position are, um, generally better than long, uh, especially on, um, on uh, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, sorry, during the inventories. So uh, what I'm looking for is to understand for every instrument the prevalent behavior, and then I can add the edge of volumes, order flow, and liquidity levels if I am a discretionary trader. Okay, what I mean? This is, for instance, a simple long-term breakout strategy, long only, so it goes only long for Apple on a daily basis. This is the equity line. So very stupid strategy, okay? Buying breakout, okay? It's a breakout strategy, very, very stupid. I mean, but when I say very stupid, I, I don't use a lot of filters or too many parameters in order to um, avoid overfitting. This is the main problem with trading systems. So this is very easy. So I know that in long term, uh, a breakout st strategy on Apple works. While, for instance, with NQ on long term, a simple buy the dip filtered with implied volatility. So VIX, for instance, goes very well, especially during the last 10 years. Okay, so on a daily basis, NASDAQ, uh, I prefer to buy the dip instead of buy breakout. But if I'm going to a short term, so I'm using, for instance, five minutes charts, 
the simple short-term breakout strategy works very well. And also for Apple, the simple short-term breakout strategy long only works very well. So what I'm doing is to uh, engrave on my screen those figures in order to um, put more edge uh, trading using order flow, but knowing that figure. So I know that uh, breakout strategies works very well. So I prefer to do breakout strategies and long position to, to take long position on Apple and, and on Nasdaq. If I am using um, a discretionary strategy using uh, order flow, I have to remember the constant war. So trading is a constant war be between aggressive buyers. So they buy market, they lift the offer. They are against passive seller. So they are selling limit. They stay on the book. They are hitting the book. And passive buyer, they are buy limit against aggressive seller. Sell market, they hit the bid. So they are um, aggressive are market taker while passive are market, market makers. They provide liquidity to the market. Okay, engraved it on your screen. When you are trading using Bookmap or using other tools, you have to assess and reassess constantly who is in control. Remember that, who is in control is the question that I have to answer at, in, at every second when I'm trading. I don't find people that is in control. Okay, now let's see some basic behaviors on, uh, on um, using a book map. So uh, the two the basic behavior are that liquidity attracts as a magnet, but also liquidity can reject, and the, the, you you have to put a lot of attention when price meets liquidity because they uh, when price meet liquidity can be a, a turning point in the market so you can have exhaustion that is a reversal pattern absorption that is a reversal pattern generally or the liquidity can be eat so you have a continuation pattern i'm calling this the pacman pattern uh, let me show what does what um, what is exhaustion, for instance. Okay, if you um, have um, watched um, Bruce's uh, videos, you know very well what exhaustion, absorption, or a continuation uh, are. But just a, a, a brief recap. Okay, uh, what happens during an exhaustion? You have that buyers that are running with the aim to destroy the resistance. The resistance is the liquidity wall. They are many, but gradually, when they are approaching the price, the level, they are losing their bravery. They are uh, scared looking at the wall. So as the price is rising, approaching the resistance, um, you can see less and less buyers and buying volume. So just before the resistance, there are no more buyers willing to buy. They are taking profit or they are stopping their loss if they were long far from far above, or they, and they are starting to sell. So the price goes down. As you can see, they are exhausted two times. Here they tried once, then they tried again, and here, no more buyers. This is an exhaustion. The, usually the price doesn't touch the liquidity wall. This is, for instance, an absorption to absorption that rejects. Absorption in front of a resistance or it's a reversal pattern. Look, look at this, for instance. Buyers are more than willing to destroy the resistance 
they are buying and they are not scared when they are facing the resistance, the liquidity level. They believe they are strong enough and that wall is just built with simple plasterboard. It's a light dry wall. Uh, but when they hit with their hammers, uh, they instead of plastic board, they, they find reinforced concrete instead. So the liquidity resists and passive sellers are adding more and more liquidity. Usually they do with native or synthetic iceberg orders and they absorb every buy market order. Um, Sometimes prices rise just a few ticks above the liquidity level, but buyers understand that the buying strength has decreased. And uh, so traders that have both the liquidity level, so at the eye, are the dumbest and uh, because they have both the relative eye, and so they are called trapped. They are trapped and they have to sell. They need to close their position. Uh, they close their position with sell market owners and the, the trend reverts. Okay, here is not so clear. Here is so very, very clear. This is an exhaustion, okay? Uh, you can see also the, um, um, the, the square here. This is the their absorption indicator. Okay, this sorry, this is an absorption is absorption indicator. So the price goes down, find the liquidity. They try to destroy. They they are not able to destroy, and the price rise. Okay, uh, and this is Enrico. Uh, I'm sorry. Can I just uh, interrupt for just a second, um, just to yes, avoid yes. Any, any confusion with um, some of the users out there with the new um, absorption indicator? Uh, and Enrico has reversed the colors uh, and on purpose. Uh, he is looking more, um, he's using the absorption indicator in a little bit different way of looking at the aggressors uh, and yes. the activity of the aggressors here. So uh, the blue square, I mean, in, by default with the absorption indicator, we show it as being red or pink. Uh, he likes it being the opposite as being blue to show like, aha, I know that these are buyers up here. Exactly. I, I keep the same uh, color scheme than that dots. So for instance, if I see a, um, a light blue, I mean, it's the same that green, so buyers. This is the buyers that have been absorbed. Here, sellers has been, have been absorbed, okay? Uh, and this is the Pacman. So they, they, they are absorbed, but the price continues to rising. So uh, they, uh, the same approach than the first one, but buyers are strong enough for destroying every kind of wall made in plasterboard or concrete. We, when they meet the liquidity level, they are partially absorbed. You can see here, they are absorbed. Uh, you see a big green dot usually, and the, the liquidity uh, indicator is, tells you they are absorbed. Uh, but despite the absorption, the aggressive buyer have more bullets and many other cards to play. So the price resumes the rise and generally to the next level. Okay, that's a very, very easy pattern to understand. And look at the level, round number, round number, round number, this is 120. Okay, so the importance of liquidity levels, absorption, exhaustion, and continuation pattern with round numbers. Okay, this is the, for instance, a Pac-Man pattern on Facebook. Look at this. Absorption, a little bit of, more of incertitude, and the price rises. New liquidity level, just a little bit of incertitude, and price goes up. Another 
incertitude price goes up there, here we have a stop run we'll see in a moment and the new liquidity level and here a new fresh liquidity has been added and so the price goes down okay but this is the pattern the continuation pattern so if you see something like this don't try to go short because buyers are in control engrave it buyers are in control okay not all liquidity are the same so you have got long-term liquidity and short-term liquidity if you have followed bruce webinars you know very well the difference and you also to be to consider liquidity add or increased before price or liquidity add or increase after price i'll show you in a few moment okay here for instance you have got liquidity add after the price has crossed has crossed above this level so the price is rising you don't have liquidity before but you have liquidity after the price crossed above this level so this liquidity in the book is a support the rise okay here the same price goes up here you don't have any liquidity the price goes down and you have the liquidity added after what do you do here if you see something like this maybe here you can see that liquidity after you go short because you are protected by this liquidity so you have a you, you can use a uh, very little stop loss but you can be not not be sure but you have a lot, a lot of probability that the price is going down okay this is nasdaq okay so this is liquidity after the price not before okay the most important pattern is the law of the attraction remember that the purpose of a marketplace is to facilitate trades so big players need to find liquidity if they are aggressors they are takers or they need to be hit by market orders if they are passive they are makers uh, more in general they like exchanging contracts in balanced market we spoke fr on friday briefly on auction market theory uh, big players prefer uh, rth so regular trading hours and a specific timing where volumes are higher for instance uh, during our um, cash session at the open at the close and at a settlement if the, if the for instance some some future you have got settlement the settlement is very important for instance for oil is um 20 uh, 20 um, 30 uh, european time central european time okay another important pattern is the opening price retest this is the open price goes up and retest the open price some figures opening price retest during last five years so one uh, many trading days if apple price moved away from the opening price more than 25 ticks the opening price was retested 440 times 35 percent during the first 30 minutes 694 times 52.55.2 percent during first 60 minutes or 1003 times 79.7 percent during first 120 minutes okay it's an edge so this is for instance our opening price retest the price moves away and retest goes down and retest okay look at volume concentration on apple the biggest dot is always at the close 
and the second biggest volume at the open. Okay, here we can see, for instance, on uh, session volume profile that the highest volume are here. So this this volume is the highest. So the point of control. You can also see that usually the closure occur frequently on a round and liquid level, or in any case, very close. Okay, so it occurs um, very often that you can close at 121 round number or open on 120 round number. Okay, important, you can predict and uh, use this information for trading them on the last minutes, for instance. Okay, all together, we have more information here. For instance, Apple open on a round price, 117, opening price retest. Here we have liquidity added. This is fresh liquidity that increases before the price meets this level. So, for instance, this is a, a long-term liquidity that stay in the book since the opening. The same for this level. This liquidity disappear when the price touch the, the level and then appears again and look at this increase in liquidity. What happens? The price respond to this liquidity going down. Okay, now there is a, a little bit movement here, and then the price rise again, and the Pacman. Okay, Pacman pattern. Look at how many ticks, fifty ticks per movement, because liquidity levels are fifty ticks away one from each other. Okay. So this is very useful because you you know how many ticks you can uh, move the price in the next movement. Hmm? Uh, okay, if you trade Nasdaq uh, using Apple, you have to understand the difference in prices. For instance, here this is Apple, and uh, the movement from the low to the height is 290 ticks, so 2.9, uh, 2.90 uh, points. And the second movement, 130 ticks. While in NASDAQ, this movement is 94 um, points and the second 75. So you have to understand the correlation can, can vary between 172, 1.73 um, to 3.08. So this is this divided by this and so on. So 50 uh, ticks on Apple can mean, uh, can represent 17 to 29 NQ points, okay? Approximately $340 to $500 per contract. So if you have a movement of 50 ticks on Apple, you can earn from uh, 3,040 uh, $3, to $580 per contract, okay? If you're able to understand and to catch this movement. Hmm? Okay, you have to do this on a daily basis because it changes, okay? Because the correlation is not the same every day, okay? Look at this. This is the NQ average volume per minute. Now I have used exchange time, exchange time. So this is Chicago. So here are the volumes. You can see at 8:30 at the opening, the volume is very high, and at the close at uh, 3 uh, p.m., the uh, volume are higher. This is the average volume per minute, only considering air, um, regular trading hours, because here we have got also Asian and European session, okay? 
Sorry. Okay. So you can see volume for NASDAQ. But more interesting than volumes is the volatility. So you have got average range per minute. So this is the average range for per minute of the NASDAQ on the last five years exchange time. So the opening is the more um, uh, is the minute with the highest range, hmm? about uh, 12 points per minute. You can see some other peaks here, for instance, 10 minutes before the close and at the close. Okay. Those are very, very important pattern for me. I'll explain later if there are there is time enough. Uh, this NQ average range per minute only during the cash session. This is the opening. This is the close. It is 10 minutes before the close. This is also more interesting. The, the frequency frequency distribution of daily high and low. So if you have you have to count at every single minute for the last 10 years, in which minute uh, you have the high or the low of the day. So the most frequent high and low of the day is at the opening of the session. So 17 um, Chicago time, so central time. Okay, this is the chart, this is the table. 5 p.m. Chicago, you have got the maximum probability to have an eye or daily low. In my opinion, this is very useful information. The second is uh, this time, this, 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 okay? 8.30, so the opening. And uh, so, I mean, th this is quite useful for me to understand the probability of having, for having the high or the daily low. Okay, th uh, this is swing distribution. Uh, for instance, if I take only swings larger than $1,000, I can see that the median swing is $1,715 and the mean, mean median are different concepts. If you don't know, use Google, uh, $2,032 um, swings. So this is, I'm using a zigzag, zigzag, is a repaint indicator, but um, you cannot use during uh, in real time, but you can use for measuring the um, swing um, range. Okay, very important, very useful to understand this. So, for instance, if you have a swing larger than one thousand uh, dollars, so you know that the, you have a, a strong probability to go. Uh, until to the median or the mean. Okay, here the probability to have a, a larger swing without any retracement larger than one thousand dollars is very low. Okay, uh, examples. Uh, okay, we are at the end. So very very quick. Look at this for instance. Uh, okay, this is an uh, absorption, rejection, but they are in control. Sellers are in control. They are having it here, the round number. Okay, one, and look at this. This is uh, a uh, resistance, 15 points, so 50 ticks, 100 ticks. Okay, this movement. So if you are here and you say that the level has been crossed, you can go short because you, you have a lot of probability to go till here or maybe here, okay? Because the low of the attraction, the, those levels are attracting the price. That's the main 
information that I can give you, use the attraction law. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is a zoom. Okay, what happened here? You can see the absorption, the price goes some ticks below and then is rejected. More zoom. You can understand very easily here. Okay, absorption, incertitude, and the liquidity freshly add here, you can buy here because you have a, a huge probability that the price continues rising. Okay, look at this. Okay, how many? This is one uh, minute and a half. So not a long period, okay? Absorption, incertitude, liquidity freshly added, and the price goes up. <clears throat> now, for instance, this is the um, absorption before here. It's here. Price is going up. In your opinion, the price is going up or down now? Up or down? Look at the liquidity here. So the probability to arrive here is very high. So if you are here, for instance, you can go long. This is view up. This is a round number. The price goes uh, crosses above this level. You can buy here because you have a lot of probability to arrive here. This is um, NQ meanwhile. OK. Look here, what happened after the price here. Okay, this liquidity level attracts. And now, look at this. You have another liquidity level. The price here, the liquidity disappear, which is the best thing to do going long. Okay, this level is here. A little bit of incertitude, and then here, and then here. Okay. Um, okay, here is easy. The reality is not so easy, but there are some, these are examples of how to understand the market now. Approaching to 120, what happened here? You have to wait and understand, and you have to understand what is happening exactly here, zooming. This is the zoom. What happens here? First test, absorption. They try again, absorption. Here are a lot of um, algorithmic activity on this level. Okay, here, more zoom. And now, look at this. Buy, 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 sell, 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 sell. But the bid and offer are rising. The liquidity disappears here and the price is, goes, is going up. Okay, if you are here, for instance, and you see that this liquidity has been crossed, you can go long. In my opinion, you have got a, a, a big probability to have to reach uh, another liquidity level. Okay. Um, this is what uh, Bruce said before. I'm using seller grassroots color on purple and buyer grassroots color. Uh, I'm using light uh, blue and uh, the in the absorption indicator uh, stands for. Um, 15,000 um, shares buy uh, or sell in one hundred of a second. Okay. Okay. You are here. Sorry, you are here. No, you are here. 120. Here, here, here. Price goes up and arrives here. 150, 120.50, and then the price continues rising. 
Okay. 120.50 eaten like a small sandwich. Okay, this is a continuation pattern. Oh, what happened here? Fresh liquidity added at 100.75 here. Rejection. The price go back to 120.50. Okay. And now we are in, let me see, I, I call the rush hour, the last hour of trading is usually very, very fast and very difficult to trade. You have to um, practice if you want to trade the last hour. Okay, here we have an interesting divergence. Um, this is Apple, Apple IS, I, uh, um, IRI, while uh, for instance here, Microsoft and NASDAQ are decreasing, okay? So um, the correlation sometimes disappear and you have to pay attention to that. Okay, here during the rush hour, look at this. This is an exhaustion and look at this. This is a order, a very big order. So more than 15,000 shares sell within 100 of second. What happens? The price goes down. So the seller are eating with using market orders after the exhaustion. Hmm? But for me, this is a, a, a like a penalty in, in, in football. Okay, you have to you have to sell here. A few minutes later, the price goes down. Ten minutes before the close, you have a very very high um, volatility, as we have seen before. Uh, this is the Palin pattern because uh, the, this, the Marco Palin is the one of my friends that discovered this algorithmic activity exactly at this hour, at this time, 21.50 European time. Okay, um, this is, let me, sh okay, let's see another example, this, um, Sorry, um, Bruce, uh, it's 5 p.m. Do you have time enough? Do you have another, uh, again? I'm sorry, uh, do you have uh, some time again? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, continue on. Okay. Uh, no no problem, okay. uh, Enrico. Continue, and, uh, we'll, we'll get to some questions as well at the end here. Uh, please put your questions okay. in everybody for Enrico. Okay, uh, this is real time. Let Let's analyze just a little bit the real time. What happened here? Very, very strong volume here. This is the, I'm calling the barbecue because this is a greed of volume. They buy, buy, buy. The price continues as a, a continuation pattern. They, they absorb, they absorb, but the buyers are in control and here you have an exhaustion okay look at this they they start to sell very easy Okay. Okay, now our example, December the 1st. What do you think, up or down? Look at this liquidity level, up or down? Down. So the liquidity is 120. 120.50, okay, here. Now, now look at this liquidity level. 
the lipid level is this 120. Okay, 120. What happened at 120? Look at this. This is um, the, um, uh, let, let me, uh, the um, indicator called, um, um, oh, I don't remember the name, exactly the name of this indicator, but uh, the, 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 um, the cumulative liquidity volume. tracker, liquidity tracker indicator, okay? Ah. So, uh, for instance, here you can see uh, if they are adding or pulling liquidity on bid and ask. So look at this, the price is um, coming here and the green indicates that buyers are adding liquidity in the first 10 level of the bid, okay? So the liquidity on the bid increases, you can see here, okay? So they are pushing, they are adding liquidity here. What do you think uh, that this action can, um, can have um, on, on price? The price is rising, okay? Look here, liquidity here, they are skewing the action. Uh, this is a uh, long-term liquidity, but here you can see that they are adding more liquidity here. So the price is rising. Okay. Now look at this. Fresh liquidity appears on the offer here. Here, look at this. This is fresh liquidity. The, the liquidity increases when the price comes at this level, but, but they are strong enough, they are in control. So liquidity is eaten and then the book is flipped because here we have the liquidity before the price. So is a hypothetical resistance. Here is a support because the price has crossed above this level. Okay, and the liquidity here support the uptrend okay for a while not for a long time but anyway the price goes down reject and goes to the next important liquidity level okay 50 and 22 round number okay so you can see the importance of those number here very important you have you can trade uh, in 50 ticks blocks, okay? Okay, 50 ticks retracement here and the price goes up again. This is liquidity before price. And this is liquidity after price. So this is a book flipping. And then again, the price goes to 123, 22, 20, 250, and 23. Okay, exhaustion here, another exhaustion example. Okay, and the price goes down, 50, 100 ticks. Uh, look at this. Fresh liquidity appears at 122.80, okay? What do you think the price is going up or down here with the fresh liquidity that is skewing the auction? The price goes down. This is the fresh liquidity added, okay? The price goes down and they, they try to go up again and the liquidity disappear. So the price continue rising. The, this level is, is eaten. And then the price goes up to the next liquidity important level, 23.50. Then goes down, how many points? 50. 
50 ticks, 50 ticks blocks, very useful. Okay, this is the polling pattern, so uh, 15, 50 Europe, um, is time. Okay, look at the close. Usually at the close, Apple is very, very difficult to trade because there are new liquidity added, just um, a lot of ticks under and above the price. It's very, very difficult to understand. Uh, that's the final overview of the entire cash session of the 1st December. So you, you have seen this movement during the day. Divergences. That's an open case of open price retest. Okay, let me say. Okay, uh, this is interesting activity. This is the 2nd of December. The price goes up looking for the first liquidity level and then price retest goes down, reach uh, absorption, the price goes up. And then here with the, at the biggest liquidity level, they uh, absorb, the price goes up, but there is a new center of gravity that has been created. Here it's very difficult to trade for me because I don't understand very well look at this you, the, the a lot of volume are created here a lot of uh, big players are trading here because the price doesn't move and uh, they like to trade when the price doesn't move they can accumulate or distribute a lot of volumes here and look at this the importance of the close uh look at this also this is another day this is the this, no, the second of december right here is an exhaustion, the price goes up, they try again, the price is rising, and here the liquidity appears. You can buy all in, uh, you can put all your money here in a, in a long position. You see a lot of probability that the price continues to rise. Hmm? Uh, okay, let me search for other important example if I can find. Okay, maybe here. This is an important absorption, continuation. Oh, oh, this is interesting. This is the barbecue pattern. This is the greed. Look at this. This is the price is going nowhere, but the liquidity has added here. Very strange pattern of liquidity here. Look at this. They are adding liquidity on the bid. They are buying here because the volume here indicates that um, the cumulative volume delta is positive. What happened? Three minutes later, the price goes up to the first liquidity level and then still goes up. They eat every single level. So I'm calling this the barbecue because this is the grid, okay? Look at this, this is the grid before, okay? Here, here, the price, little bit of incertitude, few minutes, and this liquidity level attracts, and the price goes up. The price goes up, okay? The stomach is not full here. So they are buying, buying, buying. The good liquidity to be eaten here. Look at this, this is the zoom, okay? After the lunch of this liquidity, they try, they try, they try, they try, and the price is going up. So the liquidity disappear here. They are strong enough, they can go up, okay? 
and they go to 124.50. Okay, so initial grid, incertitude 124, incertitude 124.50. Okay, 50 ticks. Okay, now the stomach feels full for a while and uh, they have done their money and the center of gravity is created here. So these are, those are swings, very difficult to trade because you don't have uh, a lot of liquidity. Okay, you can also trade in because here we have responsive buying, responsive sell, you can see it using volumes okay usually if you have a responsive buyer in a in a support you have got a an high volume here okay the same here uh, but i prefer this kind of movement i'm a, a more breakout trader than a swing a small swing trader so this, the day continues with this boring swing to the other session. Uh, what else? Oh, I've got, I prepared the 100, 100 of its examples, but um, mainly you understand that the liquidity attracts. So the liquidity level are, the, are magnet. And if the price is rising, then you have got a strong liquidity level you can challenge, you You have to buy in order to follow uh, people because they are in control until they reach, they chase this liquidity level. They are chasing this liquidity level. Here, another example of exhaustion, okay? Here, one, two, exhaustion. Okay, this is December 9th, the same continuation pattern. The price goes up 50, 50, 100 ticks. 50 ticks in the opposite direction, up, up, until a round number, okay? Uh, and now here, the, oh, this is uh, interesting because you have got uh, here, for instance, this is an important level. Look, they eat, the price goes down and they eat this level also, eaten, eaten, the price goes down. Okay, this is a, you can sell here because they are, they, this is continuation pattern. And look what happened after one, two, three, four level. Okay. Well, um, okay, this is another interesting example. Look at this, price goes up, new freshly liquidity added here, and the price goes down. This is the zoom, okay? If you zoom, you can see that before, just before this important level, 124, so round number, here fresh liquidity is added at 80, 90 probably, and the price goes down. Okay, how much? It's enough. Mm. Okay, this is a stop run. Uh, look at this stuff. This is a stop run on NASDAQ. This is happens very, very often before uh, the, the, open, the opening of the cash session so this is uh, 2.15 um, p.m in europe in europe so uh, one hour and uh, 15 minutes before the opening look at this okay this is a stop run so the liquidity completely disappears so market maker are disappearing here and with a, a very uh, small volume they can move the price very, very easily. This is a zoom, okay? Okay, this, look at here. This is the zoom just before the stop run. What happened here? So we have a very um, 
thin liquidity, very poor liquidity here. You have to consider that this is uh, today, no, yesterday maybe, yesterday. So uh, many contracts have been rolled from uh, December to March. Okay, this is NASDAQ. So what happened here? The liquidity completely disappeared with a few uh, selling orders. The price goes down. So low effort and big reward here. The price continue falling out of points, 25 points in a few minutes. Price goes down. This is the stop run, low effort, big reward with low liquidity levels. This is the market meter that, con that disappear from the market and algorithmic activity can do that. Why? Because the same pattern at the same time on ES. So this is, this is uh, simultaneously. So uh, uh, that's clear on algorithmic activity. So when they say that market maker disappear, they can hit, they can hit the bid with strong, with strong orders and move the price with few effort. Okay, um, I finished. Uh, here you have got a discount for bookmap subscription and my um, link if you want. And here, if you want to know what iceberg and stop order are in Italian, fortunately in Italian, you have got a lot of um, information in my YouTube channel. Uh, it's called trading con le palle, the, um, trading with the dots, with the bubbles. And uh, for instance, the, those uh, three webinars are dedicated to um, market mechanic, iceberg and stop order, and market buy order in CME. So uh, quite interesting, very specific um, topic, okay? Uh, no, I'm finished, so I'm here for questions. All right, thank you very much, Enrico. Um, really excellent stuff, very, very clear and, and very simple. Uh, uh, from Friday's webinar, um, a lot of complex data. Uh, well, I mean, it's been out for a long time, but you consolidate it in a very, very nice way. Uh, and then looking at the strategies, uh, just uh, so so straightforward, uh, you know, wonder, wonderful stuff. Um, not too many questions. I've been answering them along the way. Uh, John is asking, though, about on some of these charts, you ha also have, I believe, the correlation tracker with the blue and the yellow uh, lines. Yes, blue is Microsoft and the yellow is NASDAQ while I'm using um, Apple charts. So, for instance, okay. Okay, here. There you go. Okay, yeah. this is Apple. You can see here, underline. This is so dots are Apple, yellow Nasdaq, and blue is Microsoft. I okay. Today I just show, uh, just shown um, Apple, but I use both. I am using Apple, Microsoft, Microsoft, and also Amazon. Uh, stock in order to trade uh, directly them, obviously, but also NASDAQ. Okay, excellent. Um, so um, let's see, there, there's one thing I, I wanted to also mention, if you can go back to December 8th for a second. December uh, on the Yeah, on Apple. Okay. Um, one more. One more. There we go. Uh, yeah, go go a little bit further. There's some. There's something on the higher, a little bit higher time frame. I saw. Here, higher time frame. There, there. This, a... this one. This one. This one. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, like a really nice um, reversal pattern here. Would look at the skew in the the order book uh, down around uh, uh, 1800. Uh, although it's a, you know a little bit fainter. Uh, it's the reaction to that liquidity uh, that, that Bookmap can show that um, 
uh, that started to push it back up into 124. Uh, so um, no, a little, a little bit lower, uh, around uh, 1800, 1800 your time on the chart. There. 1800 here, okay. Yeah, the blue, the blue uh, below on the bid. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is a, I, I'm calling the Martinelli ladder. There's a, it's a liquidity put it after the price. They are they are skewing the action. They are pushing the price high. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a nice example. It's a little bit fainter liquidity, but uh, uh, very consistent though. And the reaction to it was buyers. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, just uh, wanted wanted to point that out to everybody. Uh, there was some questions about, um, you know, how to how to read the the context of this uh, in, in book map. Um, the um, oh uh, Enrico, uh, uh, we have a new feature coming out soon. Uh, that you're really going to like. I think this is going to really make this a lot simpler uh, for you. Uh, it's kind of similar to the correlation tracker, um, but what you're going to be able to do uh, is to be able to consolidate an instrument uh, or the order book into one instrument. So, for example, uh, if you want to look at the FANG stocks or your S&P 500 um, pie chart that you showed that the majority of the yeah. uh, uh, players are just five or 50% of them are just five stocks. You're going to be yes. able to create a single um, symbol of those five instruments. Okay. I saw this on crypto. I'm, I'm a, exactly. a beta tester for, for this. Uh, yeah. Really, really useful. It can be very useful. Yes. Yeah. So I'm it's, more than it's willing to try it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, we'll we'll definitely use you as a beta tester, uh, and uh, the um, uh, it's it's gonna it's some months out uh, in in terms of development, but uh, we are first offering this feature for crypto uh, crypto markets, the consolidated book. Uh, but uh, I wanted to mention it too because I'm it's pretty exciting to be able to look at. I mean, what a great correlation! Uh, what what a great thing to look at! Uh, like just put in those five stocks for the S&P 500 and then put yes. in the, uh, the S&P or maybe one or two or three of them, uh, maybe yeah. the, you know, the bigger leaders for that day uh, and make a, make a symbol for it. So uh, anyway. Yes, it's very, very useful for me, for my trading. Look here, this is Microsoft. So look here, the, the liquidity added just after okay and the price goes up this is the first target and this is the second okay okay this is the real time uh, you can see also qqq Q, Q, as you can see qqq is not so clear than apple okay you have got oh this is important okay um those levels are very important because are not concentrated on best bid and best offer. Okay, so these those are um, long-term liquidity levels, very important as support or attractors. Okay, but the liquidity of Apple is sharper. Okay, I can stay here <laughs> until tonight if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think uh, we've we've uh, covered just about everything uh, in terms of the questions. I've been furiously typing away here, uh, and uh, I think we're good. And you've gone for now an, an hour and a half. Uh, thank you very much, Enrico. Uh, if there's any uh, last minute comments you would like to make, uh, then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. No. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. Thank. Thanks everybody, and uh, thanks again, Enrico. Uh, excellent presentation. I will have the uh, recording for you up uh, soon. Give it. Give it a few hours here. Uh, also note um, uh, that Enrico, those those links, um, please send email them to me uh, because um, 
uh, I believe that uh, YouTube did not allow them uh, because uh, they don't want to promote outside of YouTube, I guess, I, you know, so. I see. I see. Yeah, so okay. I did not I do not see them, but I might be able to slip them into the description of the webinar for everybody or or we'll just email okay. them out to in a in a mass email in one of our our digests. Something okay. like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh excellent. Thank you very much Enrico and uh maybe we'll do another one uh in in Italian for you. Yeah, okay. I'm ready. In Italian is it's, it's really easier for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.